All right, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, and welcome to the stream. I had a couple days off, got recharged, rejuvenated, and uh, yeah, I felt pretty good. So we're back with some stationers. Ben will be here. Uh, we're trying to figure out our power problem. I have a feeling we're just using way too much, and uh, uh, we're going to have to address that. we got a monitoring set up, so we'll be able to figure out what's going on. I'm going to go over here and uh make sure audio is coming through okay on the stream so we dial into that real quick all right all dialed in wait all right let's uh press the game button and uh bring us some station ears Oh. 
The reason why my glasses get so darn dirty all the time, I'll, I'll never learn, is I'll, I'll take these out in the garage when I have a pair in the garage. So these get dirty because I'll go out there looking for something. They're just reading glasses. They're not actually prescription glasses. So they're, um, they got a 1.25 strength on them. I mean, I can drive fine. I can watch movies fine. I can go to see everything fine. It's just, and, and, and the monitor looks fine too. What I see is it's just a little fuzzy. That's all. So these help me unfuzz things. I used to wear these only when I played PUBG because people would hide in the shrubbery and I couldn't tell. So I called them the, my sniper glasses, sniper specs. All right, so let's load up. I did uh, load in the game to make sure it's been so a couple weeks, make sure nothing broke. Didn't look like it. We still have power problems. <sighs> right, so we ran into a problem to where we're just running out of power. Um, logic seems to work. When Ben gets here, someone actually asked a question on one of the YouTubes that I that I posted. So we're transferring power. Okay, good. So what I want to do is I want to try to um, shut down power. Okay, that one's off on stuff that's not being used. Why are those on? Is the generator on? Oh, generator fired up. Okay. Hopefully that doesn't blow out a window. Um, all right. So now with the generator firing up, that means these are going to be firing up because it puts out quite a bit of exhaust and it must have just fired up then. All right, let's go over and make sure Ben's not dead. So the sun's getting ready to go down. Um, temperature, pressure looks good. So why wouldn't it be? Well, I have problems sometimes with logic. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go through and we're gonna shut off everything that's not being actively used right now. I'm just gonna try to Penny pinch some power. Hey, good morning, Kate. How you doing? Oh, you know what? In fact, hey, Prime. Hey, Kate. Thanks for the two months on Prime. I appreciate that very much. I think is what I can do is we have a transformer here, and we can just shut everything down. Trying to figure out our power loss issue. I think we're just using too much. No, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. So this is uh, the monitoring <laughs> that Ben set up. So we got Greenhouse 1A and 1B, I'll, our tool platform, the arc furnaces, the mining area. Looks like it's in the greenhouse number two. It looks like those are our two big draws right now. Um, turning off stuff that doesn't really need to be on. here now this will turn off all the mines drill rigs turns off the power to all of this which is fine that's good 
and um, it turns off the logic. The logic's on. Oh, the, why did these got turned off? I'm confused. Huh. These got turned off somehow. No, it just some a flip got as like I said, for me, sometimes between saves, things go south. I don't know, they're just not real bad. It just Yeah. No, no, there's no way the storage could be full. Oop. 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 This would be full. All right, so I turned off the drills. Um, turn those off. So all that's turned off. The drills are off. The centrifuge is off. Those are still doing what they need to do. <sighs> um, I do need this to be temperature controlled. Oh, uh oh, we burst a pipe. All right, so I'll tell you what, we're gonna do this. Fix that, I know what the problem is. I'm going to fire up the solid generator here. Hopefully it doesn't bust a fuse anywhere. Um. So it's 40 degrees Celsius in here. That's what it's supposed to be. And the water still kind of chilly so i gotta come up with a better way of doing this because this gets too cold we get water oh i know how to fix that i can do something similar to um what we're doing for all this over here that's right that's how i can fix that Okay, um, turn all these off. All right. Not that many on. Never mind. All right, solid generator is running. Um, and okay i'm just going to be running back and forth here i want to make sure pretty sure we're just using up more than we're actually making so the generator's running because it dropped down below 25 percent and it runs until it's up to 95 percent all right that's going to be a while, which means let's make sure we got the fuel. We got the fuel. Uh, the only way I have fixed that is to have logic on the cooling loop to close it and pump out the gas if it gets too cold. Wow, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I think I'm going to go um so it's always a catch 22 right so right now we have a power problem so having logic takes power uh is what i want to do is i want to do the exact same thing that we're doing here but on a smaller scale i don't think i need such a big tank i think one of those uh i think i can use one of these tanks um that we did in here I think I can use one of those. 
But Ben will be here in about an hour or so. So I'm going to try to solve our power problem before he gets here. And then... Uh, so I am leaving some stuff on that I don't need on. Now with that generator running, we should see a buildup. Unless, unless a pipe bursts somewhere. Oh, okay. Whoa. Why is this not on? It's better. That's what I'm talking about. The logic always goes hooey. And the only way I found to fix it. Oh, it's right there. So when we get more than 200 kilopascals in the line, we're supposed to turn that on. I'm just gonna do it manually right now. That's better. All right, at least that logic's still working, all right. So let me turn this. So right now, that's got a state of one. So that should be on. So it's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this logic off. I am going to... Um, copy the name of that. Then I'm going to... Dismantle it. Put it back. And this has got to be reprogrammed. All right, so we want the... Um, turbo. We want that. And we want to turn it on. There we go. All right. So that's the only way I can ever fix any sort of logic issues with the simple check this sort of if then that that sort of thing. So All the filters should be on, okay? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn the generator off. Survive 359 days. Yeah, there was a, I, I died in there. <laughs> I walked into a room that was way too hot. My EVA suit could not compensate and uh, I, I uh, my lungs got fried, <laughs> but thanks pilot, appreciate it. So that number should be going down, good. All right, that number's going down. Um, so we still have logic in place to, if, um, yeah, all right. So we're transferring power down from here downstairs. And this is our other generator which is running off of solid fuel not coal but solid fuel 
It doesn't generate any more power, but it will burn much, much longer because solid fuel versus coal. Um, 535 Kelvin. And I'm going to turn these off. So the, um, so I have a, a small arc furnace chamber here. So when we had to, when we used to go out and get the ore manually and then unload our belts or backpacks, this would generate gases because it takes the, the ore and it, it uh, you know, gets the impurities out and the, the byproduct is, is gases. Oh, I'll be honest with you. I don't know how hot it was. It was pretty darn hot. Um, so, and, and that's a normal process, right? So you, you take a, an iron chunk of ore, you put it into an arc furnace and it gives you an ingot. Well, down here, uh, we, so we don't go out and look for ore anymore. So down here, what I didn't know was the centrifuge takes the dirty ore and cleans it. So I used to have uh, a large chamber around these guys to replicate that I would take the gases which it wasn't producing only to find out that when you clean the ore there is no impurities you're just generating a lot of warmth so I had a room in here that was closed in and I thought I had some cooling working but it wasn't only to find out that you know the atmosphere doesn't change it, it just gets hotter <clears throat> and when I walked in there and was trying to figure out why the uh, active vents weren't turning on based upon pressure or something like that. That's when all of a sudden I got the warning about too warm and uh, uh, it just, it cooked my lungs. Yeah. So. So I've got everything turned off except for the arc furnaces. I've turned off the generator because it the the output exhaust is uh, a little bit too much for our filtering system. Ever since they changed how the filters operate, they, they're not that good anymore, I guess. So we're getting a lot of hot gas in here. All right, if that hits 30, we should see this light up or uh, turn on light up. So the CO2 is 65 degrees. Everything should be right around 30. That's what I'm trying to balance everything at. It's quite a bit of CO2 in there. Now there's 30. If it goes above, that logic should kick in. There we go. Sweet, all right, that logic works. So now the heat exchanges will be, you know, balancing between 65 degrees Celsius, 79 degrees Celsius, so. And um, that's coming down, good. And then over here, is the newly revamped heat exchange system, which has got a recirculation system built into it to, well, this draws more power, but it, it works faster. All right. So with the, um, the phase change, how did that pass OSHA? Well, I have to say. Uh, with the phase changes um, on the pollutant and the nitric oxide, we have the, the whole uh, condenser evaporator thing going on here. Seems to work. All right, so. I want to do the same thing over here on this cooling, but on a smaller scale, because there's not, not that much room over here.
Oh, there's nothing in there. <laughs> I, I, never mind. Um, so let me see. So we ran into an issue to where we was uh, producing steam in here when we didn't want to. And we also got water, actually steam, into our filtering system. So we got this set up, which works. And then over here, the cooling system for making the solid fuel developed a problem too. And we we did the same thing. So that, that's a good fix. Um, but do I need to use a large insulated tank? I can still do this. But can't I just send it to uh, one of those other tanks? So let me go get a couple valves and some pipes and stuff. Oh, I just thought about something. So over here we have passive cooling. Make sure it's still working. Again, seems to be. All right. Did I tell you this is about the fourth time that I've burst a pipe and lost all the gas that was in the refrigeration unit. Is that silver? So, full batteries, good. Now, if the logic's working, uh oh. Why does that say one? Is in one hundred percent? Hey notable, good morning to you. How are you doing? Oh that that one is for one hundred. Okay, that's right. All right. Alright, so we're gonna use the top side generator right now. Waiting for Oops. that got turned. I'm gonna I'm gonna empty the whole lot. Good. So I finally broke out the GoPro and um, which has been in a box <laughs> since we moved. And um, it had been almost eight or nine months since I used it and I haven't really used it. I just knew that after the house was renovated, uh, one of the things I wanna do is in addition to my gaming videos, I wanna start learning woodworking and uh, I wanna record it and share it with you guys. and rest of the world um but it, it's a it's a gopro 9 and um oops hang on there it is hey there you guys are <laughs> so um I don't have a process down pat yet. I mean, I have a um, the wireless mic, so it's got a it's got what's called a media mod kit on it, so I can put the uh, 
the receiver or the yeah the receiver here and plugs in and i can wear the microphone uh that's not made by um gopro that's made by road so Trying to turn it off. I don't know how to turn it off. Man. It's on video. There has got to be a way to turn this off. Coffee's brewing. Good morning, Ben. How you doing? I'm trying to figure out how to turn off my um, <laughs> stupid GoPro. And all right, so I had to use the app on my phone to turn it off. Yeah, all right, so that's all drained. That's good. All right. Uh, hey, good morning, Saturn. How you doing? All right, so those power drains are done. Um. So I'm going to go over and turn off the solid fuel generator. And we're going to see how things go. Try to figure out where the power drain is. So right now, arc furnaces are going. We have two greenhouses um, and some logic. So, right. All right, so I need a couple of uh, valves. The, um, so pro some of you might recall a few months ago, um, uh, Alex and I put up half the sheetrock on the wall that I'm trying to get sheetrock on, which has got a window, which we've got covered up and sealed off and stuff like that. Well, the wall doesn't have any electrical. We, we both knew that, but I'm supposed to be the mastermind behind this. And I said, oh, I, I, we'll put the, uh, the electrical sockets above this sheet of rock of, of sheetrock well to be consistent that's going to be too high and where the window is it's a perfect spot to put the miter station because since there's a window above it that you won't be able to see i don't need to put cabinets above the miter saw station on cabinets can go to left or right of the window so perfect so i need to get an outlet there and not as high up here but down lower so the the other outlets are about 40 to 45 inches depending upon where you measure it at and that puts it right where the sheetrock is that we hung so i've got all the the, the wire i've got the um what do you call them i got the um cable protectors um instead of doing a uh, nail uh, covers on the outside. I'm doing this other thing. I'll share with as soon as my eyeball stops itching. So you drill a hole, you run your wire, and you run a risk that someone could put a nail or a screw and hit your wire. So you, you need to protect, and you, you do that for plumbing too. So typically, um, what are they called? Nail, uh, nail shields, something like that. Um, wire, nail, 
Nail guards, thank you, nail guards. So they, they typically look like something like, although I'm getting beautician stuff now. <laughs> they look like, can I, please? Oh, I just want a picture. Oh my, I'm having a day. Fancy nails, yes. All right, so this is what, this is what it looks like, you know. It's a piece of metal that has little nails and you put it over the two by four that your hole. So imagine this is the two by four and you drill your hole. Now, if we rotate it, it goes that way and no one knows that there's a wire going through that. So to protect it, you put this nail guard over it and then you can put your wall and all that kind of stuff. Yes, fancy nails. Well, I'm actually going a different route and I cannot work the internet today. I'm gonna do them what's called easy guards. No, that's stationers. I'm, I'm not having a good day. Can I please click? All right, let's minimize that. Thank you. Oh, for Lord. So, so this is it's the same concept, but instead of having instead of having something over the two by four. The wire still goes through something that's got, you know, metal, so it still gets protected. So I'm going that route. And I've got enough of those now to do it. Okay. So anyways, to do that, we have to take down the sheetrock that we already put up. Oh, thanks, Saturn. Um, drill my one eighth hole, put these in and talking with Flip, who by the way, his whole family is, is electricians. Um, I can do one 20 amp circuit, which is what I was going to go for anyways. And I can daisy chain them, which I know how to do that. So, um, I just need to drill the holes, put the protectors in, put the wire down and find where I'm gonna put each receptacle. I'm not gonna put the receptacles, we're just gonna punch a little hole in the sheetrock and put the wire through it, so. Yeah. So I need these and I need a couple. So initially, we were gonna do it this Saturday. Hey, good morning, Discount, how you doing? Um, guys, there's a, there's a link for discount engineer. He streams all the technical stuff and he knows what he's doing. So I uh, give him a follow. Uh, all right. So I'm going to do same thing here. so long since I played the game I forgot what I was doing I need some pipe do we have any oh we got regular pipe right here should be enough it's wrong color though I can fix that Would love the space to have a wood workshop, table saw, pillar, drill, etc. Guessing you're not using kick plates because not removing the drywall. No, I'm, I am removing the drywall. Um, so, like I said, uh, the uh, when you say kick plates, you mean the the nail plates that I just showed? 
I'm not too sure what a kick plate is. Again, I, I'm barely a DIYer, so. Uh, the concept is that, uh, so the, the wall that we're putting sheetrock on is in a garage, all right? So it's outside the house. Um, and it's the most exterior wall we have, and it's got a window. It's got an old window that was built in the 1960s. Uh, it, the window is so old that um, to, to move the windows up and down, it has weights on pulleys. And in fact, we have them in the house in a couple spots too. And they work brilliantly still. We're not worried about that window working. So I cut the pulleys off. I took the weights, I gave them to Alex's dad, because he grew up in this house. And um, is what I did is I, I took the storm window off, I cleaned the window, it's got one broken uh, area, and I, I did a good, I did a patch job on it. Um, then I put the storm window back up, so I don't have to worry about rain or moisture because of the storm window. Metal plate that hammers into, oh yeah, the nail plate, the nail guard, yeah, I, I, I talked about that. So. Um, and then on this side is what I did is um, I used that rigid foam, that uh, Pink Panther foam, and I cut out a couple pieces and I, I used uh, foil tape for HVAC to keep it up there. And then I put a, um, I put plastic over it and then I put more foil tape over that. So it, it's sealed. Nothing's getting through that air, bugs, nothing. Um, so your question, uh, evil six layer is I'm using something called easy guard. Hang on. Yeah, the, the easy guard is this is it's kind of like the kick plate. So instead of being on the outside of the two by four, it goes inside the hole where the wire goes. And it's the same concept. Yeah, I'm, uh, I've seen uh, uh, quite a few channels of DIYers that use them. Uh, everyday home repairs, uh, fix this, build that, they, they use them. And uh, the hole has to be uh, one and one eighth. So I have a, a spade bit for that. And uh, once you get the hole, you just tap it in with the hammer, run your wire. So let me show you again. So instead of putting your kick or nail guard on the stud, this goes inside the stud. And how I look at it, kick plate usually refers to the metal plate bolted to the bottom of a door. Oh, really? So in theory, this is still gonna, I don't wanna say in theory because it still has, let's look at the details here. Trying to see what metal, and there's some pictures of other people using them, look at that. No, that, that, I, I get it. So I'm trying to see what the metal Oh, they got their own. Oh, look at that. <laughs> do, 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 do. Well, they got a white paper. So if you want to look it up, it's right there. Ooh, arc fault protection too, cool. But the way I look at it is is this is again I'm not an electrician. I'm barely a gamer. But I look at it that the stud can still be utilized instead of trying to drive a screw or, or something and it hits it and you got to relocate it and the wires are still protected. So that's how I look at it. All right. So we got 
Um, I need to protect, I need to connect this over here. All right. All right, so instead of using an insulated tank, I'm gonna to try to do something differently. Um, hang on, I'm just modeling this after. So, on both ends, right, all right. So I just need a tank to hold the stuff temporarily as it works the process. and it needs to be liquid. All right, so can't use these anymore. But going back to your... Um... What was that? That was uh, Saturn, right? Yeah, I mean, um, Alex has been kind enough to, uh, to give me the garage got the washer and dryer in it and right now it's it's you know I, i've made I, I posted a picture I, I made a couple of small one small not workbench for anything permanently just kind of a a bench to do work on i did make a dedicated uh wood planer stand which um i'm running into a problem with the um the dust extraction the I'm gonna to have to get two and a half inch tubing, but connecting it to the planer is not a problem, but connecting it to where I wanna go is a problem. Yeah, 20 years is awesome. You know, the only thing I've done longer than 20 years is order pizza and eat it. It's true. I'm looking for um, water pipes. That's only two. I don't know if they need to be insulated. We've been using insulated pipes. So um, is what I was going to do is this a uh, couple of days off. I said, you know what? I have a 3D printer. Why don't I 3D print an adapter? Well, every single adapter that I find says it goes from either four inch to two inch or from two inch to two inch. And they don't because um, they don't. I, I don't know why they don't. They're just either too big or too small. And I don't want to go through all the sanding to make it work. So I said, well, wait a minute. I have a set of calipers. See? I have calipers, can't really see that. I'm gonna go take my measurements. I took my measurements and I can't, for every single tutorial trying to do my own adapter paste, I, I can't get to the, the, the extrude process seems to fail me every single time. I can't seem to, uh... so I told Alex, by the way, Alex and Alex Jr. are at Universal Studios right now. Um. I'm gonna get her help in following the same tutorial. Yeah, it, it's definitely a scaling issue, um, but I figured, you know what? Instead of instead of taking someone's STL file and keep guessing what it needs to be, because if I scale the whole thing, I may not have to. One end may work, and one end may be too small or too big. So I said, you know, instead of going up or down and wasting all the filament and the time. Let me make one exactly, it can't be that hard. I, I saw this guy that had a very similar problem and he made his own. I said, ah, that's exactly what I wanna do. Now he made his like six millimeter stick on the wall, which was too thick. So I said, all right, I'm gonna follow his example. And for some reason, I can't seem to uh, get it to work. Oh wait, I need those pipes. I mean, I, I can build my two circles, I get the right dimensions and I can pull but I can't get the extrude to work. I get an error, so I'm doing something wrong. So I told Alex that when she gets back and gets settled, that we're gonna, she's gonna follow the tutorial with me and just see if I'm listening incorrectly because you know, two heads better than one, plus she's smarter than me. All right, how are we doing on power? Full battery there, nice. How are the batteries downstairs? Uh, full enough. Whoa, I don't want to do that. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. All right. 
There we go. So the container I want to use, I think we have a spare. Yeah, I want to use. I need it for liquid. I only need one. And oh, maybe I need two. Uh, I do have a hard time calling myself an electrician nowadays. I currently build and wire building automation panels, but have many memories of wiring up and servicing residential properties. Well, again, I'm not a limited. Lim I am not. I, there's no one over there. I'm not an electrician. I'm not a woodworker. I'm just a. I'm an ex Microsoft ex Intel employee. Okay, who also ran a comic book store for almost ten years. So, <laughs> um, and I don't want to say that anyone should be able to cut and strip wires or measure and cut wood and call themselves a, in the trade. Absolutely, I'm not saying that. Um, I'm thinking I want to do this. I think. So uh, the house we live in was uh, originally built in the 1953, 55, and it was just a square house. And I've told this story many times, so many people are gonna be bored of it. The room, I'm, the room that we sit in with the computers was originally the living room. So there's a fireplace behind me that I've got covered up with a green screen. Uh, and there was two bedrooms, a bathroom, a uh, dining room, and a kitchen. That's it, nice and square. As the family grew, they added on in the 60s, like 67, 65, 66, something like that. And what they added was another living area. They call it a den. We call it our living room now. And then they added uh, a connecting room to the garage. So they added another room, a uh, connecting room and a garage. Then they added a bedroom that was kind of a longer bedroom and it did not go all the way to the garage. So the connecting room had windows on both sides or still does, and it was called a breezeway. So you could see out that way, you could see the backyard this way, boom, you're in the garage. And then probably mid seventies, if, if that maybe 1970, they actually filled in that one room. So now it's just a big rectangular building. Um, Alex and I bought it uh, about a little over two years ago. We had a resident living here for about a year. They moved out at the end of October. So the end of October is when we started our full blown renovation, ripping out the old carpets. We were gonna originally go with hardwood, but then we didn't wanna to have to worry about scratching it with all the stuff. So we put carpet in one, two, three, four rooms, um, left the, then uh, the only room that has the original flooring is one bedroom, which is hardwood and the kitchen area, which is not the original tile, but a section of tile they put on the original linoleum. Um, and all the other rooms that didn't have flooring, we put uh, the LVP. So um, we, we redid all the paint. We uh, took out all the closets so we could make the rooms larger. We did that with the bathroom. So the, the original bathroom is larger because we, we took the closet that was next to it. Um, and uh, we added a bathroom. So we took the long bedroom. So think of this as a, there's a, a, a door here, a door here, bedroom, and we cut it in half basically. And um, we made a new bathroom. So with that, we had to put in a permit for electrical and plumbing, I had plumbers come out and plumb it. And I got to do the electrical. And it was quite the learning experience. I got a lot of help from chat. I got, um, uh, Flip, who again, his family is all, his two older brothers are journeyman electricians. And uh, so everything I did was based upon code. I uh, had an inspector came out and give me the thumbs up. So I had to do my own circuit to the sub panel and everything. So I know how to do it. I'm not, you know, oh, I, I don't talk the talk. I just look it up and do it. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. The The thing about it is that when you, as a homeowner, submit a permit, whether it's for construction, 
or electrical if you don't have someone doing that stuff for you now we had a plumber they did their own permit so when you submit as a homeowner a permit you become your own general contractor so here i am gamer circle and a lot of people call me gc so it became gcgc GC, gamer circle general contractor so kind of a nice running joke there all right um i think what do i do with this do i reconnect that or do I have, maybe I don't have to worry about that. All right, so. Um, there we go. So anyways, all the, and the panel, so the home that is so old, we had the entire, what I call the nervous system, all the old, what's it called? Tube, um, tube and copper. It's the two wire. So the home would not be able to be modern with the old electrical system. There was parts of the house that were, so the last room they added did, did have Romex and that went to the original panel that's still in the garage, which is still compliant. The old sub panel, I put a picture out in Discord. Here, I, I'll share a picture here real quick. So, Discord. And if I go out there right now, I think I have a picture of it. Oh, I know where to find a picture. Uh, so if I go to our Discord, and then if I go to the DIY section, which is... The old sub panel was the old one that had the glass screw in fuses and the big pull out ones. Um, trying to find it. So Alex and I are pretty much doing all of our own improvements. That's we, we installed a shower enclosure, everything. Ran into some problems with that. Wired the room wired this room for data. All right, hang on a sec. I'm at a loss. I know exactly where to find it. Here it is. This was the original sub panel that was inside of a cabinet in the kitchen. So you can see here we had plugs, lights. These were 10 amp or 15 amp and these were uh, this was the dryer, so this was a 30 amp. So, old sub panel, hopefully that means you got rid of it. Yeah, I pulled it out and I'm saving it because I wanna do something cool with it, not in practical use. Um, so we got a new Siemens sub panel. So for the other one, which I, I took pictures of, I think it's a, a GE panel. So I have to find a 30 amp or 20 amp breaker. So that's what I'm gonna daisy chain the new outlets to. All right, so I wanna see if this is gonna work. They're so cool looking though, they really are. Oops. That's connected, that's fixed. Now, I don't know what I'm doing here. There should be nothing in the pipes because it, we had a burst. Okay, good. So now I'm gonna go test this out and see if it works. So how's power holding up? All right, so whatever I turned off might have been the drills. Because I see the arc furnaces are still going. Wow. They, they really did a bang up job. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, I, I've, I've never seen any disasters with that. Ooh. All right, so it was like, oh, I was coming over here for some gas. Um, well, I turned off the gas generator, Ben. I turned on the solid generator to top off the batteries. So we are, we were up to 90 to 100. I turned this off because we got to figure out a better 
um, staging solution for the gases. So, because it, it's putting too much exhaust into our little staging area, since they changed the filters, they're not that efficient anymore. So we're we're hanging on to too much gas in this pipe system here. Oh, that's right. Speaking of gas. And let's see here. So anyways, um, we're gonna pull the sheetrock that we put up off the wall. And I'm gonna drill my holes, put the easy guards in there, run the wire and measure on the sheetrock where I wanna poke the holes for the wire. I'm not gonna do the boxes. I'll do them later. Then we're gonna remount this sheetrock and then we're gonna do furring strips for, um, so over time, something's happened. Something's settled one way or another because where the window is, so the window itself has got its own frame, but then the framing for the two by fours on the right, as you're looking at it, on the right hand side, there's a three quarters inch gap. And on the left side, there's a half inch. So we created furring strips for the uh, sheetrock to nail into. Uh, worked out fine. Monster, good morning to you. So we have to do that. And uh, so before I could even do this, we had one wire that goes to the water heater that would come up from the water heater over to the far side of the garage and then come down and then go to the panel. So what I did is I said, that's gonna be in the way with the sheetrock. If I go up there, I'm probably gonna hit that wire. So <laughs> I went and turned off the breaker to the water heater, unhooked the wire, pulled all the staples, which by the way, was very, very stressful on my shoulders and then re-ran the wire down the middle of the garage where all the other wires are, stapling as I went, got it hooked back up and it worked. I was scared though. I was scared because when I hooked up the, wa the water heater and turned on the breaker, I went to test and I went to a faucet. The water was not coming out hot, only to re remember that I had it on cold instead of hot. I, yeah. I turned on the shower and I, was gotten, I got hot water out of there, so I was fine. All right, how much we got here? That should be enough. Back from the ads, gotcha. So now the garage wall has got no wires in the way. I'm gonna add wires, which is kind of ironic. All right, that there, turn that on. Now we should be getting, all right, very cold. And get, if it gets colder, it doesn't say it's unstable yet. So, all right. So now, uh, why didn't that turn on? All right, hang on a sec. This. This way before I ruin something. Oh my God. Hey, look at that. Hey, Ben, thank you so much for the gifted sub to uh, Evil Six Slayer. Appreciate that, Ben. Awesome. Fixed it. No more ads. Uh, or, or less heads anyways. Right, let's turn this off. Well, Ben will be here uh, shortly. He, he's the brains of the operation. I just come up with the ludicrous ideas and all the heavy lifting. All right, so, yeah, that's on, that works. And it did get warm in here. What is your favorite waffle? Oh, ho, ho, my favorite waffle. That's easy. <laughs> Why is it so easy? Waffles. That's my favorite waffle. I made that waffle. 
Oh, no worries. So if I go running over here, that's the heater. So if we turn this on, so the thing says if it's greater than 305.15, which it is, this should be sending a one to the logic writer, which it is. So I flip that on. So hopefully when it gets warm or cold enough and we send a zero, oh, uh, there's a new, I can, I can do a less than, right? And that should turn that off, right? Oh, guys, it's all good. All right, sweet. That worked. Yay. All right, so now the logic is in place. And now I just don't know if what I did is going to work if we ever get. So it's really cold. Oh, maybe it worked. Cheers. So I've never had any physics classes. My physics came from chat, Ben, and this game. I don't know anything about pipe pressure. I didn't even know what KPA meant. Um, so what I'm learning, I'm learning here. All right, so it seems like when Ben gets in the game, he's gonna take a look at his monitoring wall, wall to see where all the power is being spent. And I'm pretty sure it's this operation right here. These guys are probably the huge draws of power. Now, if we go halfway through the day and we can't fill these things up, that means we're probably using more than we actually are generating. The only reason I said anything about the ads was I felt bad he was trying to explain something to me. I don't mind repeating it unless it's something stupid, like don't ever say that in my chat again. And then they do it and they go, what did I say? I, I don't like repeating that. That's, you know, it's a family friendly, I'm a seasoned youth, so. Are you kidding? These guys have been here longer than I've been streaming. That didn't make any sense. All right. So we just have to um, see what's going on here. Ben's been playing uh, Stationers with me for a, for a couple of years now. He would try to explain things in chat and I said, Ben, why don't you just get in the game with me? And he was, um, okay. Do I have to? <laughs> Yes. Oh wait, let's actually put these over here. You know, I, it, it is a, it's a great bunch of people and I don't think they can come here to learn anything. They come here to learn mistakes and not how yes you need to oh, are, you, are you well stationers for the most part was a real learning experience for me because i didn't know that when you smelted stuff you got gas so then somebody it was um um eod um god he he explained to me um how to set up a basic filtering system that I still use today. The, those, those right there. So I, I just, each time this game has added or changed things and I had to relearn stuff. Yeah. Then there's a lot of smart people like Cade. Cade's got this brilliant idea that if the cooling here gets too cold to have some locks just say, hey, if it's too cold, do something. Well, I'm doing a manual process right now because we're trying to figure out our power draw. So this seems to be holding. That's empty. How much? I found GC on YouTube. 
when trying to learn this game and chill to listen while working from home. There you go. All right, so we've only got 113 moles. I think that's enough pressure for this little tiny room though. I think that's gonna work fine. Well, I appreciate that, Cade. Let's um, take this out, back. All right, so sun's getting ready to go down before I run this back. So not bad. The batteries are almost all the way topped off. But don't forget, we have a, we have a logic system in place that we share the power between downstairs and upstairs. And we're, we're, we're having some issues with that. Now, if there's a 10% difference between uh, bottom side and top side, we transfer power up or down, depending upon which way it needs it. And we keep doing that until, and I think if the, if down below, if the basement gets below 25%, the generator kicks on and it charges the downstairs batteries up to 95%. That way we have a backup to the top side batteries if we overextend ourselves. And that works and that's what's going on right now. So each time this, this changes, this tells you that we're, uh, so number one says transfer to top. Number two says transfer to underground. So that means the, um, right here, the uh, the transformers are turning on, allowing power to go from top side to, to the basement. I'll definitely check them out. I've had the game for about a month and have been consuming as much Stationers content as I can. Hey, there's Ben. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. You got your Java flowing? Ben! <laughs> I'm on cup number two. Oh. You are in, uh, you're out of standby mode, huh? Chat is, uh oh. Oh, look at that. Blow pipe. That's why I turned that off. Yeah. Why would that blow? Oh, did something go liquid on it or? Yeah, that's the X. Yeah. Why is it still flowing if that's off? All right, now stop, but okay. There we go. Okay, there's a little still left. All right. All right. How cold? Uh, let's check. So that was on X. Oh, that, that would be in the pipes then. Pipe which doesn't get recirced. It's the same temperature. I would have that gotten cold. Oh, oh, it's a different network and it's past. So it sits there and gets colder. All right, come up with a solution for that. I'm going to jump in here if you're ready. Yep, go ahead. So pollutant turns into liquid at 3.6 kilopascals if you keep pumping in and it starts three point. Oh, okay, so I need to lower that. And then that way I don't have to worry about that. Thanks, Caden. I have a drinking problem. I just spilled on myself. I'm okay. Yeah. Make sure Ben's not dying. Go in here and do some shrubbery though. There's Ben. How's your temperature? 
Looks like it should be about 30. Yep. Nice. Alright, so boom, 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 boom. Take care of my water. Top off the old food machine. Thirty two cooked tomatoes. No, thirty two tomatoes. You got in here ben is what i did is i turned off the transformer to the uh new centrifuge and the four drills um i turned off the downstairs generator because of all the exhaust it was producing the filters were running all the time and then instead of that i turned on the solid generator so the only thing that's running are the greenhouses um some stackers lights that's about it so your monitoring station should be giving you some results okay let's go take a look all right so this is measuring uh megawatts kilowatts watts watts all right so the big i'll convert it to kilowatts later all right, so right now, greenhouse 1B is what? Is it the big one? Uh, you know, it's the first one, but there's two transformers around it. Oh, okay. So, is this the, uh, is uh, 1B, is that the, um, the logic for the cooling and heating, or just everything? Uh, I think 1A is probably the logic, because it's just 55 watts. Okay. So, where's the other transformer? Is it the one? That one's off. They're all labeled to match what's on the panel right. here. It's here. So, this out. Oh, that's not a transformer. Find. This is the transformer that's down here. Aha. Transformer recycling, so that's not it. Uh, 1B is over here. Oh, that must have been you. <laughs> I don't put my transformers up on walls. Did you do that? Ah. All right. So that is running. Uh, the power goes in. So that's running the inside of the greenhouse, which is just lights. And that's it. Well, it's registering 1300 watts. So it's the one that draws the most power. 1A draws only 55 watts. What the heck is drawing all the power then? I'm very confused. Oh, uh, it's not this. Uh, it's not this greenhouse. I can tell you that. All right. So something else is tied into it that's sucking the power. That's 1A. Yeah, goes... that's 1A. Yeah. Oh, I see. 1A feeds. Okay, that's going down. Okay. That's going down to the... Um... The arc furnaces. <laughs> That's the arc furnaces. Oh no, it's not because that's that's done here. No, so that... that's the main distribution line. Yeah. All right, so there's nothing on over here, unless. Yeah, I think I was supposed to put a transformer somewhere over there. All right. 
So if you I think I did. The... Somewhere under the shoots. All right. Let me, uh, let me go into... Notable Joe's going to enjoy this. He says this is the favorite part of the game. I put down a wall. Or put down a floor. I dig it up. I put it down. It's not really stationers. Yeah, right over here. Oh. That's our processing. Uh, yeah, which I believe is the arc furnaces. Right, that's the arc furnaces, but I'm trying to figure out if that's drawing... If 1A greenhouse is coming over here... Ah, it's this transformer, which currently isn't on, though. It says secondary silos. All right. Uh, this game looks so cool. If I had a reason to lay off the booze, it'd be this game. <laughs> All right, so if this transformer, 1A right here, that's the input. No, that's the output. The input comes from, oh, oh, so it's this logic. Oh, so 1A is also feeding this arc furnace and the furnaces, I think. No, that's coming off that. Oh, all right, so we have- Everything a, is distributed from the heavy line. Right, but, um, so this output here, right? This is output on 1A. It goes to this computer. And we have a crossover that goes inside. Oh, it doesn't go inside. It just stops. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I think it's cut short somewhere. Yeah, it, it, it might have. It might have run the stacker or the un, unstacker. Yeah, it just runs the unloader in the, in the stacker. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hang on, I got to put the window back real quick. All right, so 1A is drawing, again, how much? 55 watts. Oh, all right, so it's 1B. That's, okay, so where's 1B at? 1B was on that's the wall. That's the one that's on the wall, yeah. What the heck? That's running everything inside the greenhouse, which is lights and the doors. Yeah, total is 1,380 watts. Just really not much. But... That's true. All right, all right. So mystery, mystery kind of solved. I'm going to put these panels back. All right, so sun's coming up. And um, battery, battery status a lot better than before. So um, put these back. Because I thought you said you put a transformer in underneath the chutes, like in over here. That's why I was doing it. Yeah, it's a medium forward. transformer. Oh, that's, no, let that's, me show you. Yeah, that's this one right here. I got you. Yeah. What you call for processing. Yeah, exactly. And I just put it there just for the purposes of, you know, measuring um, the power. Gotcha. All right. All right. Um, oops. Now I turned off the transformer that powered the, the miners. I was, I was looking for an easy way to cut off power. So I'm going to turn that one back on. Which. Okay, now it's on. Oh, wait, sorry. Um, mining area versus... Here's one that's unlabeled. So, if you're looking at the mining area one, what do you read right now when you're monitoring? I believe that's a zero. Um, I think I left that there purposely because all it does is feed a battery. Right, and then out of the battery. So is what I want is if we ran into power pumps, I still wanted to be able to run the miners. So this one right here is not labeled. Oh, that's the one that should be labeled then. Okay. Or did I just... Uh... Oh, yeah. Okay, no. I see the logic here. I actually labeled this one mining area. Because, because it goes, goes to the mining we're area. not interested in what the battery does with that transformer at the output. We're just interested in the draw on the main line here. Oh, right. Yeah. So if the... All right. So... Yeah, you're right. That's why it's not labeled. All right. So the miners are turned back on. I wonder how much that jumped up. Am 
Well, I've got a cable analyzer on here. I can tell you it's actually drawing 2.2 kilowatts. Wow. All right. So that's, so if I turn now, off, this is like, um, you know, probably not a truly representative reading because all this power does is recharge the battery. Okay. So on the other side of this cable, can you uh, get your um, network monitor out and um, take a look at these this wire on the opposite side of the transformer? So I'm gonna turn off all these miners and I wanna see how much one draws. I know it could probably go to the Pedia. Sometimes that doesn't seem to be accurate. It's drawing almost nothing right now. It's right. 120 watts. All right, so what, what is on right now, so the miners are off. Um, we have a uh, Omni transmitter and the uh, silos are on. Oh, that and just jumped up to 300 watts, 400. Okay, so that means, and the arc furnaces are not on it. Okay, so the only thing that's and on the- it's down to 119. Okay. I don't know, I don't know what's doing the spike. All right, I'm gonna turn on one miner. Ready? Yeah. There we go. Oh, there we go. Tapping the 300, oh, 800. Okay. So these things draw 500 each. Here comes another one. 900, 1. 1.4 kilowatts. Wow, okay, this is the big power draw then. Well, I mean, you know, it's not 10,000 what? <laughs> uh, it's... You had a very long pause in there. Uh, we're at two point one kilowatts right now. All right, Joe. It's it's a significant power draw. You know, it's the equivalent of two hair dryers. So it's nothing to write home about. Couple of, couple of uh, yeah. Um. Now, as soon as the um. As soon as the uh, combustioner uh, settles down. Now also by turning that on, the transformer that powers this stuff over here, I'm gonna turn on. Okay. That's, gonna, that's gonna be on a different. So this is for uh, secondary silos. So those are now on. So right now our big draw comes from these uh, deep miners. And... Um, well, I mean, it's not a huge draw. Okay. All right, so what's the next one over? So now that we know... The uh, Park Furnace Room, which is currently drawing 375 watts. Oh, the, the little, the, the self-contained one? I think so, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're also we already ran over that one. Uh, mining area or processing filtration right now is at a 1,100 watts. Okay. Uh, greenhouse 2 is at 1,800 watts. All right. And then furnace, arc furnace 2, or furnace 2, is that the one over here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's not drawing any power right now. Yeah, I, I got it turned off. All right, so let me go turn it back on. All right, I got to set up the, the other four monitors. Well, there you go, furnace two is a thousand watts right now. So before you go off and do that, let me ask you, uh, I did something to the cooling yep. over here on greenhouse one. Is this going to work or did I do it wrong? Because I didn't use a big insulated tank like we did before. It's the same thing, but I'm just using a one of those things. And why I did that was that whenever it gets too cold, uh, I have a pipe burst. Look out, you're on a collision course with that blue round spaceship over there. Uh, liquid pollutants, right. That would be the Earth, Codsworth. How you doing, Red? 
Um, is that I would hold... be concerned if um, the AC never kicks on. The AC's on right now. Right, because there's a plant in there that generates heat, right? Nope. Or it picks up a little bit of heat from the sun during the day? The, the heat from the sun plus is what... So why is it on... It got warm because we had no cooling whatsoever. The heater wasn't on. It was just however long we went with no conditioning in there whatsoever, and the room heated up. So you're so saying it's that, just solar heat. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you're saying that once the air conditioner kicks off, and this stuff sits here and starts to cool, that this little tank won't be enough to deal with the water? Uh, I think it'll be okay. My concern is that um, if it goes cold indefinitely, then uh, the potent freezes. Right. So uh, I guess I have know, too that's much... kind of an extreme condition, which I don't think it's ever, ever going to be achieved. Uh, Caden said that pollutants starts getting um, cold based on pressure at 3.6 kilopascals. I think that's what he said. At 3 kPa, yeah. Yeah. And it freezes um, at minus 100. Yeah, so it's not impossible for this temperature to hit that tank. Uh, it's just unlikely. Okay. So it'll probably be fine. All right. So to be on the safe side, what I should have done is not pumped as much pressure into this. No, actually you want the pressure into this. Okay. Enough. All right. Yeah, this is good. If they were a rocket jockey, they would not be playing Starfield. There are no rockets in Starfield. Oh, West dude. Oh, anything that blasts off from a, it's a spaceship, right? So was the space shuttle a rocket? It had rockets on it. Not a rocket. <laughs> you know, I, I miss playing Kerbal, I do. You know what I don't miss about Kerbal? Is every couple hours it starts lagging on me because of mods. So what's the answer, Kerbal 2? No, not right now. All right, so. Wobble rockets. You know, there is, um. What is that? What's that other rocket? Uh, there's um, Earth X Simple Rockets 2, which is called something else now. Simple Rockets, yes. All right, so we're going to leave this running. And the temperature should be coming down, right? Temperature's coming down. All right. All right, so as Ben goes over there and reprograms or programs some monitoring, my concern is that I have, whoa, I'm sure it went flying by. Doom 1 is not an RPG. Yeah, you don't get any experience, right? You're just finding guns. Yeah. Um, so if I take a look at the tank of water we have in here, which ain't much, it's uh, it's warming up, and this was from some ice that I melted. So it's got some water, and it's got non-water? Vapor. Vapor, all right. The temperature is 8.1 degrees Celsius. The room is 34.2, and is cooling down to 30 degrees Celsius. So in all likelihood, since these are not insulated pipes, not an insulated tank, over time, the room is going to warm the tank and the tank is going to try to cool the room, right? Yep. All right. All right. So I can leave all that alone then. As long as nothing, yeah, else, right. as long as nothing else breaks. 
As long as that cooling system uh, doesn't freeze over, it should be fine. Then we'll go to plan C. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So just to bring everyone up to speed, Ben and I are trying to automate stuff. And then once things are automated, we're going to actually go to site B. Now this is site A, which is just kind of, hey, let's get something to work. If it doesn't work, let's make it work and try to automate it, make sure it stays working. And then site B will be what we learned, but it'll be prettier. And where's site B? I'm glad you asked. That's all the way over here. So just to play with the, the wireless transmission of power, I've got, so these can only do five kilowatts max. So I can, bring 15 kilowatts over here and I got some old our old storage batteries here and I have and the only power draw is this thing right here and then what I want to do is out here is where uh, site B was going to start But my video game has rocket propelled grenades. But Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. Or are you just saying that you put an explosive tank of fuel at the top of a rocket and it blows up? Evil cannot read. I said role playing games, RPG. Oh, squad. Oh. I used to watch this guy's videos that um, God, started with a K. He played squad and then he moved over to um, something else I can't remember. And it's funny how squad's got mods on it too. <laughs> it, it was, it was, I tried playing it, but it was, it was too much for me. All right, so I got that going. Now let's go back and get the, um, Squad is my go-to for first-person shooter. Um, right now for first-person shooter, um, Starfield <laughs> for me. I'm having a lot of fun in Starfield. I really am. I think Bethesda did a good job. They didn't do a great job, but they did a good job. Well, what I did with my first playthrough is I did the main story arc and I did the um, United Colony, the UC. So I did two main story arc and then one of the factions. Now with the second one is I'm doing the Rangers and uh, so I got, and then of course, since, since the main story arc takes you to New Atlantic, there's all the side quests from there. I love the veteran community with squad. You know what? I had nothing but when I got into the squad's discord because I was having some problems. Yeah, these guys bent over backwards to say, hey, check this setting and got it all working. And it just, you know, once I get in, I have the PUBG mentality, not really the Counter-Strike, but the PUBG. And it's a lot of hurry up and wait, right? So, yeah. Does the sun affect your testing after it rises? You mean for power? It sure does. But with the second one, I'm doing the Rangers. And since you're on a different planet, I'm getting different side quests. And um, I've started an outpost. I don't know what I was doing, but I'll talk about that more tomorrow when I play some Starfield. All right, so these guys are on and they should be filling up. So this is off, so that should be filling up. This one, okay. Well, it's a military sim, sort of, and if you hurry up and wait, wasn't a thing I would kill the emer. it would kill. Very true, very true. I mean, I've watched a lot of the videos where the guys were, um, you know, it was, 
one of the things that I had a lot of fun watching is that a 50 man squad dropped in with helicopters that would have to go and either rescue someone or assassinate someone or, or whatever the, the objective was. And they're up against like 500 either AI or other players. And um, it was fun to watch. It was fun to, to see these guys, you know, some of them being ex-military, some just being military minded, just watching them, you know, uh, you, you'd got all the different, yeah, yeah, the camera, camera, armor, very articulate guy. All right, so all the arc furnaces are done doing what they need to do. That's him, that's him, that's him, yes. All right, so let's, um, let's crank this up. Yeah, it's straightforward. Yeah, it just, and I don't want to say his channel is family friendly, but he, he hardly swears until like something just really goes wrong. Although Starfield's not really family friendly. Get a lot of those uh, guys cussing at me. But I started a base in, in Starfield, an outpost. I started an outpost and uh, I ran into an issue. So those of you that are might play, playing Starfield, I found a small tutorial on how to set up. And I, I found, I think I found iron, aluminum, um, ben, benzene, and maybe copper. So I found four things on a planet. And when I was trying to set stuff up, I ran out of resources. So I went back to my ship. I went back to New Atlantic. Got it. Came, when I came back, there were spacers that were sabotaging my stuff. I didn't think that was a thing. I had to kill them. And then, and then with no spacers around, randomly the equipment would explode. So I think they planted charges or something. I don't know. Yeah. You got that, but they were underneath the grid. Well, I've got one of the bodies is there <laughs> still. Um, the other ones ran off or, or, or the game teleported them out. And so I, when I, when I got, before I got things kind of running a little bit, I was using her, her corpse as a container. <laughs> I'm a terrible gamer. No, I don't have any crew there yet, but I got tired of that stuff exploding. So I set up a couple of uh, turrets there. All right. So everything's running 100, 100 here. I have a 17 credit bounty on me. Whoa, way to go monster. Andy, check out the spreadsheet I made. Will help you. Oh, okay, okay. I will, I will. I still got that. Well, is is uh, uh, is what I did is I set up. Um, I barely brought enough resources, and I got everything running with power. And um, now that I have more power, more resources for the adaptive frames, whatever, I should be able to get more power, so I can get more these things, more drills running. And I created the the symbolic links to the storage and stuff like that. So. Now, what's interesting, this playthrough, I don't have a companion since I'm not doing the Constellation arc, but there are other people in the game that you can pick up as companions, as crew. All right, how are we doing on power? Sun's out. Ooh, all right, so. Yeah, I think you're right, Gopher. All right, something happened, yep. I, we had a pipe burst. What's plan C? 
Ah, uh, I was afraid of that. Okay. Plan C. Um, I noticed the pressure was uh, a little bit high in that flight. It was in the order of like over one megapascal. Right. So try um, lowering it. See how long it takes. Three hundred would be enough okay. for right. that AC unit to work. It it might yeah relieve some tension there. Gotcha. Yeah. Find where I was. <laughs> Nothing in there. All right. So 300. All right. So I need to lower this to. When you disconnect the burst section, does it go back? No, it doesn't. It burst means it's just destroyed. Although you can now repair damaged uh, stuff. So this is now set for 250 kilopascals. Okay. We have 250 kilopascals, temperature is minus. 20 and going. <laughs> no, we don't have any flex seal. No. I've used that stuff before. Um, at the old house, the washing machine drains into the ground. That's standard country drainage. It doesn't go into septic. And when it rains a lot during the winter, uh, the, the, the drain will back up. So we have to sometimes run it to an external hose just to go down into the uh, into the lawn area. So we didn't have a proper fitting when we first did it. So I used flex tape. Stuff works brilliantly. What was that? Minus 100 was freezing, right? Okay. I've got a, a stupid idea. If if I had some logic that would detect the pressure temperature and if it got too warm, would it be so stupid to have a pipe heater turn on? I mean, it's not a crazy idea. But isn't that counterintuitive because you're trying to cool a gas? I guess you could check it at like minus 80 degrees Celsius and, and chill it down to minus 20 or something like that. All right, so actually it's holding. 
Yeah. Right. Or you could do the fancy uh, the solar heater panels. Oh, I got you. All right, that's holding. All right, so power top side is, I want to say, okay. Oh, jeez. Whoa. Yeah. I'm playing the game like I'm in Starfield. I'm trying to do my booster. <laughs> I don't have... <laughs> All right, how are we doing here? This is good. Processing ore. And good. All right, good. The... All right, so problems. Okay, this doesn't need to be here. Um, is what this is part of is what used to be here is before I got the arc welder, I ran out of gas for my welder, but I was lucky enough to have water and the resources to make the electrolyzer. So I, I pumped water out of there and it went through a process, it went through the electrolyzer and then it gave me um, uh, fuel for my tank. So this is left over from that. And being that that was here, that's why this pipe went like this. So I'm going to clean this stuff up a little bit. I agree. All right, so I am questioning what I'm doing here. Hang on, let me. So if I have hot hydrogen going in, that's my fuel. This takes coal and makes liquid, I'm sorry, it makes solid fuel out of it. The hydrogen goes in and then it comes out. Oh, and then I'm filtering the hydrogen out and then it goes back, back in. All right, good. I was wasting it. Wait a minute. No, I, I think I'm actually. This unit's not on. Only when I turn that on though. So, so if this isn't on, I... all 
I guess if the fuel just gets spent and then it goes out here. Okay, so I think I'll have to monitor that. Okay, and then this cooling system set up. That's empty. Hmm. All right, so I think my babysitting days are over. I think. back on. And um, Ben, on site B, what do you think should be the first department we work on should we work on a pressurized room and then go from there or should we take like the filtering process and take what works and then take out what doesn't work and try something different or cool platform cool hmm. room um uh, part of me wants to do a pressurized room. Okay, same here. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So um, the one thing we got to fix before we move on is that if we fire up our generator down there, um, our staging area is inadequate now. And um, yeah, dig up so-called staging area. Wondering if we just um, instead of putting in pipe, put into um, a series of tanks. Yeah, but I'm sure there's a better solution than building more infrastructure. I just don't know what it is exactly. We should probably set up some like test area, or maybe spend spend some time off stream and do some experiments. Right now, there's only 137 kilopascals. Oops. 
should be coming from yeah it's coming from the combustionable centrifuge so it doesn't really generate that much exhaust nope not at all it's got temperature but not that much stuff not much pressure
Yeah, we're not generating enough power. You know what I want to do is I want to do some simple logic topside with the solid generator before, um, before we let the gas generator kick in. I'm going to, I'm going to collect the data from the top side batteries. And if they get to a certain percentage, um, say, say if they get down to, I don't know, 55%, I'm going to fire up the solid generator because with your logic that won't interfere with anything because if there's that 10% difference, it'll just keep transferring from top side to bottom side. Correct. Yeah. Uh, okay. let me throw another suggestion at you because I think that's really the core of the issue. The Schmidt trigger that turns on the gas generator, it's set to turn on when the charge hits 25 and it's set to keep running until the charge hits 95. So it's going to run a long time. Yes. As we found from observing it, once the uh, gas generator turns on, it's on for a day and a half straight. Um, I propose that we change the upper limit to 50 instead of 95. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. Someone had a question from YouTube on one of the things, and I was going to oh, go okay. out there and ask the question while everyone is here. As I get there. So this person um, asked, uh, referencing your generator selector, if your nitrogen pump can go from zero to 10. So I think this is for the gas generator. If your nitrogen pump can go from zero to 10, why not just set it to pump rate would be equal to temp current minus temp minimum divided by max temp minus, uh, so it's, he's he's got a formula here. So that it starts off at zero when the temp yeah, it sounds more like, like a suggestion then the question because yeah you can program all that that calculation but it's best done by an ic right uh an ic chip because doing it just with bare logic uh, that's just that's messy well what he's trying uh, to it's say it's definitely possible yeah it looks like he's got uh it said he would be ramping up to push the cold nitrogen until it reached a steady state and regulate it a little better than having two states so four stages i guess in cooling the generator off i will put this yeah, so our our two state thing is yeah you know it's met as a dirty workaround right so i'm gonna put uh, this out but, you know it does it does you know it does, keep it does running that gas generator for like i said a day and a half straight yep. and it works yep i'm gonna put this out in stationers this was a question from youtube based on are you gonna part, click this? Uh, this was for part 30. All right, there we go. All right, um, yeah, so yeah, let uh, me go change that Schmidt trigger uh, okay. setting there. All right, cool. And then we can see how that works. So you're thinking that instead of trying to ramp him up to 95, we basically half that. It won't run for a day and a half. It'll run for a little over half a day, maybe. Yeah, I mean, the idea is to keep it under, uh, well, uh, roughly a half a day so that, you know, it runs while we're waiting for the sun to come up. Okay. Now, if we outgrow our solar generation, again, the solution would be to add more panels or to... So no, we what's... have an otherwise a steady source of whatever right. um, fuel we use. So if we use one IC chip to do what all these logic chips are doing, we're saving power with one IC chip, right? Yeah, actually we are. Okay. Seems to be overcomplicating something that works, but it's a good idea if you want the min-max output. Uh, oh, for the cooling? You talking about, Caden? The uh, the thing we ran into, so we had this working really good until they changed, um, oh yeah, until they changed the, the pumps. 
the volume pump used to go up to 100, right? And then the turbo pumps went up to, I never maxed it out, but it would go above 100. And with the old pump system, we had this dialed in pretty good to where it would, it would, um, the gas of fir first, if I back up quite a bit, we were pumping way too cold of gas in. So that's why we, um, our gas only goes down to um, two degrees Celsius, which actually is too cold. Um, because according to this, the temperature can't be any colder than five degrees Celsius. And it can't be any warmer than 55 degrees Celsius. So that's why our uh, our gas is at a certain temperature coming in to keep it cool. That way we don't have to do a, uh, a shock. <laughs> we don't shock the generator and get it too cold, um, but it does maintain. But as uh, Ben was saying, our two stage was working fine, but now it, it still works, but the generator's on way too long and he just changed the logic. So now it'll, uh, when this gets down, when this hits 25% and this kicks on, it'll turn off at 50% instead of 95%. Yeah, so it'll run for half a day instead of a day and a half. Okay. Hopefully. Well, so that's our, our generator is our backup to our solar. Because during the night, we drain the battery's top side and we we pass power from the basement to the top side now of course when the basement gets too low that's where the generator is supposed to kick in and start topping off the batteries and then also the reverse where if we have more power top side than the basement the power transfers from top side to bottom side so in essence we're taking almost full batteries and trying to balance out until we can't do it anymore which I think is a, a good system. Because I don't think, ultimately, yes, the solution is to add more solar. I get that. But you can't do that all the time. Like on planets like Mimus, you can't do that. You can add panels till the cows come home. It's just gonna not be as efficient. Once you learn all the changes, they will throw something like, yeah, they'll they'll throw a curveball. They always do. So I don't see a burst pipe, but the wall cooler is complaining about something. The only thing no... it typically complains about is the pressure. Yep, there's no pressure in the pipe. Yeah, that's why it's blinking. 
Why is oh oh we did have a burst pipe. Another one? Yeah. I might need your help over here. All right. I'm coming. Um, all right. So I'm trying to program logic writer number 10. The input, I believe, if you can verify that. It says logic is... reader 10. Perfect. Okay. The output should be LED display small 10. Got it. And the parameter is setting. Awesome. Can you do that to the other three logic writers? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, you want to work on the readers. So you were able to get the uh, the inputs okay, but it looks like the outputs, you were trying to go to LED and it was not going where you wanted. Yeah, I think there's maybe something, some kind of a sync issue, but I'm having... Yeah. There's like 13 different uh, circuits on the same line here. And it just, yeah, it's not synchronizing right. Uh, all right, so if I followed, so that should be 11. Logic reader. Oh, that says logic writer. Yeah, I might need some help with their readers too. <laughs> All right. Um, the logic reader 10 should read from the satellite dish. All right. I believe it's a transformer, uh, but I might have to go double check. Transformer secondary silos, recycling, greenhouse 1B, 1A, mining area, small, small, 
freighter. Yeah, you don't see a transformer for a satellite dish, right? I see, I see tower. No, I don't. All right, stand by. I'll see what's going on here. Will do. Okay, it's here. It's called Transformer. Oh, Transformer Large Satellite Dish. <laughs> All right. It's under L. <laughs> um. Must not be on the network. Can't see it. All right, double checking that. Um, yeah, it's here. Um, I have Transformer Tower, Transformer Trader, Transformer Small, not labeled. Another Transformer Small. Oh, that's Mining Area. Hang on. Um, all right, so hang on a sec. Okay, so I see... So Transformer tower then i have transformer trader small it's a small transformer then i have another one that's just called small then mining area all right then we go into the greenhouses recycling that's it okay i'm guessing it's just not able to read this oh right because the data portion hold on Okay, uh, so instead of using the transformer, we're going to use the cable analyzer satellite dish. Okay. As the input. Cable analyzer, mining area, or processing sat dish. That's it. All right. Um, and then I'm using settings, or what am I using for? I'm not sure, but let's go with settings for now, sure. If there is a setting. Um, all right, by using the cable analyzer, the options I have is prefab hash, potential power, power actual, power required. I'll go with power actual. Okay. All right, I got that, which shows zero <laughs> right now. Yeah, it's um, not uh, doing anything right now. I got you. All right, so the next one over, which is logic reader 11, the input should be what? Yeah, that's going to be... That's the trader. Uh, so transformer. Transformer. Trader. We'll do power. Now, on that one, since we're using a transformer, I have required power, prehash, power, error, lock, and settings. All right, you want to set. All right. All right yep. num number 12. Wait, that's not registering correctly. It says 5,000. Input is transformer trader. Small. That's the setting of the transformer, so that's not the correct parameter. Oh, so um, we need maximum ratio on required power. Yeah, there you go. No, there's a power power. Want required power or power? Hmm. Well, okay. right now it's reading... One for power. And... Required power, it says 60. Yeah, that must be the right one. Okay. Uh, check uh, two over on number nine. Okay. 
Okay, that's looking at uh, cable analyzer. We're looking for. Uh, we're looking for another one that's using a transformer. Trend number mm -hmm. eight. This is fun. Yeah. Cable analyzer. Cable analyzer. Did I use cable analyzers everywhere? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm almost at the end here. Uh, yeah. So, no, what, what is that? That one's using power, actual. What is this thing? I don't know what it's using. Number one? No, number three. Area power control. Oh, you're using APC. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. I didn't know you could do that. Hey, I found a transformer. <laughs> That's a number one. And you're reading required power. Required power. Okay. That's what I have. All right. So let's go back to 11th. All right. She's using a transformer and required power. All right. I think I also have a cable analyzer on 11. But... Um, I have that set for transformer trader. Yeah, it's just because you use the transformer. It's fine. Okay. All right. And then 12 should be what? 12 is a tower. Transformer tower. Maybe. There it is. And then we want in hard power. Okay. And then yeah, 13. Good. 13 is the filtration cooling. That's basically the basement of our filtration system. I gotcha. And that's on a transformer or cable analyzer? I don't remember. Cable analyzer, <laughs> hour, trader, logic reader. Okay, so let's go back this way. Satellite dish or processing, mining area, GH2, GH1, filtering. Is that what I want? Mm, filtering cooling. Or filtration cooling. Now I'm going to go take a look. Control ice and tooling. Or ice and cooling. Oh. Secondary silos, recycling. Oh, it's not labeled. Hold on. All right. Uh, it's okay. for uh, what it was a uh, cable analyzer or transformer? It's a transformer. And it's called what again? Filt cool filtration right. cooling. I have. Filt. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And we want wired. Oh. Um. It's for logic. So we have coming down the da data cable. Uh, we're able to get a breakdown on the power draw from transformers or cable analyzers. So we can tell, like right now, the trader, which is all the way over there is drawing 60 watts and then something is drawing 535 yeah and then he's going to add it all up and say what our total draw is so right now our heat exchangers are drawing 2560 watts kilowatts not watts All right, so sun's getting ready to go down. I wish they would let the logic chips connect and share power if side by side. You mean like, um, just don't worry about power if they're next to each other, they kind of just 
absorb the power kind of like radiant power uh, anything to help being able to cram these together together you saw although i had all the writers yeah laid out there that's because i had to use left and right in a way that was unusual yeah. oh yeah because your your data goes down this right got it oh wait i went the wrong way that would be oh going up there right i got you all right yeah it's a lot of spaghetti now believe it or not if we wanted to simplify this but yeah complicate it that sounds wrong there is wireless data so we're all these what but the cabling that goes across the base you can collect all that data and utilize it which is what he's doing but yeah th this right here is kind of like a compact spaghetti Just put in a microwave but yeah if you were wanting to grab like we did this once before we had a wireless transmitter up here for data that would monitor the sun and then we had little satellite areas for power for the base to have so when the sun's not out we had lights on but when the sun came out we'd turn the lights off to save power so at each one of these light locations we would have a receiver looking for a one or a zero and if it got a one it would turn on or vice versa Why is my... Oh, jeez. I pressed I for inventory. I gotta stop doing that. Where was I standing at that I was not getting my, my battery charged? You over here? Yeah, there's a kind of a dead zone there. Oh, I got uh, you. My battery's low, too. Gotcha. All right. Make sure the game wasn't having some additional problems. I have taught my son how to make tea. I've reached peak parenthood. <laughs> well, you know, it's a skill, right? It's a trade. Power low. Well, that's interesting. There's a gas in a water tank. So the the evaporation isn't Yeah, we might have to switch to uh, an active condensation uh, device. Well, that sounds fun. I don't know what that is. 
uh, we've set one up before, haven't we? Well, I've, I've... You mean like in the greenhouse number two? Uh, somewhere. <laughs> In the sauna, yeah. All right. All right, let me go review that. Well, the, um, if I had too much pressure, it got too cold. So you mean not enough pressure in here? Power low. Seven, seven kilopascals. We're running 95 kilopascals for cooling. So here we have a purge valve or a water line that goes to an inlink tank that was to take care of gas. So when we had steam in the water, purged it into a tank, what's this thing? This is a passive liquid inlet. So we were, we were taking the steam out of the air, putting it into pipe, and then purging it. Or turning it into, I don't know what we were purging. Aren't we purging the uh, liquid water and a water vapor out of the room? Yeah, so we had steam in the room that's what the so steam basically is liquid or actually steam's considered a gas yeah all right so the passive liquid inlet is pulling the moisture out of the air that means i believe the the game's intention error is that it's draining liquid water out of the room okay put it into a liquid pipe which is fine, but then the pipe also had steam in it, I think. That's, we used a purge valve, dumped it into a tank, and then we released it as a gas. Purge valve. Wait, show me that valve again by the vent. No, let me just go over there. All right. <laughs> so this does the opposite of what I want to do. I want to take water and turn it into a gas. What's that little gas one right there? That is called a purge valve. And it's set to five kilopascals. Takes water and goes to gas. Unless that little yes. filter unless that little filter thing is supposed to be atomizing it or something. Yeah. So it pulls the I don't know, purge valve. But Print one up, see what it says. Purge valve. Here it goes. Purge valve. Allows the removal of pressurant gas and evaporated liquids from a liquid pipe. Similar to a back pressure regulator. And the purge valve moves gas from the liquid input liquid pipe to an output gas pipe. So that's what we're doing. We're pulling the liquid putting it into a, an inline tank and that was evaporating it and turning it into a gas and I guess we were venting that out. Uh, that's what we want, right? Well, what I want over there is I have I have a tank that's got gas in it that doesn't need to be in there. But what we're trying to do is that when it gets cold 
and it turns into a liquid, we, we want to push it to that tank, evaporate it, and then push it back as a gas. But I'm doing it with a liquid tank versus a gas tank. So this is a gas in a wood, uh, wood container. You know what? I'm just going to print them all and let you sort it out. <laughs> well, I'm not going to know. I'm still fuzzy on, on, um, uh, the actual solution here. So if this pipe gets, if the gas gets too cold, it will freeze. We need a way of keeping it from freezing. And then right now I have a, I have a, an issue with gas in a water container. And all of our top side battery is about, oh no, the sun just popped out, okay. So if I have gas in a liquid pipe here, how do we get the gas out and put it back into, I mean, it's the correct gas. It needs to go back into the black pipe. Um, right, I believe that's the function of the expansion valve. Okay. Let's check the wiki real quick here. Expansion valve allows for removing liquids from a liquid pipe into a gas pipe. Only allows liquids to pass in one direction. Typically, this is done to allow the liquid to evaporate into a gas as part of an air conditioning loop. So, the gas should be. How does the gas leave, though? There's nothing to pump it. I mean, it's. It's stuck as a gas in a liquid environment or in a liquid infrastructure. Hey, good morning, Electro. How you doing? Well, um, we know we're using too much power. Pressure in the tank is less than the main cooling loop, so it would move. So it won't move. Well, it didn't used to be, there used to be none in here. Yeah, this is why we want to switch from a passive valve to an active valve because the passive one is, yeah, it's pressure limited. So this one right near needs to be swapped to a who? Yeah, to a purge valve. Okay. Wrong uh, tool. Purge valve going that way. And I need power. Okay. 
5 kPA looking good well that's why I set that too um but I still have okay uh if you use a pump you can go from lower pressure to high pressure you mean just a normal volume pump the whole liquids and gas thing is actually pretty simple, but it takes a minute of tinkering and testing until it clicks. Yeah, I haven't done any tinkering because I just keep thinking I got it right and that doesn't do it. All right, so so what's it take to get all the gas? So we need to have more pressure in here. Just lower the uh, pressure on the device here at the zero. Oh, I got you. Oh, 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 okay, that's interesting. Okay. There you go. It's gone. All right. So, so explain to me that if this gets too cold and it starts to freeze, this here is going to the um, condensation valve is going to grab liquid. Yeah. Put it in here, and then the purge okay. valve is going to turn it, or this turns it into a gas. Condensation yeah, takes water. I know the simple way to describe it is that the condensation condensation valves takes the extra gas and turns it into a liquid, puts it in the liquid uh, network. Okay. Then the evaporation side here does the opposite. So the purge valve replaced the the uh, um, the evaporation uh, valve. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's now, that's what they're trying to. As, okay. Yeah. Uh, so the thing is, of course, you know they're. It's not as simple as it does what it says it does. There's conditions to where there's a pressure on one side and pressure on the other side, and um, that determines what stuff goes where, right? Right. what gas or liquid goes in which network. Um, so by putting an active unit here, this purge valve, we're basically making sure that everything happens regardless okay. of the pressure on either side. It's forceful, okay. And the, yeah. the, the visual representation is this little round yellow thing is supposed to be a, a vent that's atomizing the water back into a gas. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. And the, okay. And the other one does the reverse. The pressure valve goes from gas to water. All right. Yeah. That one, you can think of it as some kind of a spinner. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, so hopefully, um, let's see how things are working here. So we've got 239 kilopascals. It's cold. And it's on. So you your concern is that when the AC turns off, because it doesn't have to cool anymore, that this stuff is going to continue to get cold, and hopefully this loop here will keep it under control? Yeah, so the idea here is when that gas gets, oh, so very cold, it's going to start turning into a liquid. All right. The condensation valve is supposed to pick up that liquid, dump it into the liquid network. Because right. if it wants to be in the liquid state, then why fight it? Just let it be a liquid, right? Right, got it. And, and then our... if it's, uh, yeah, the active unit here will send the liquid back into the gas network. Gotcha, all right. Provided it can do that, but yeah. Uh, as long as it can keep up, right? Exactly. Gotcha, all right. Because this is the reverse of what we're doing when we remove the steam from the 
because we used no we actually used one of these to remove water from the okay okay all right yeah so we got it. same situation just a different environment all right yep okay i need this to happen more and that way i know how to fix it but you're missing one piece of this cycle uh you would want to prevent that from running always in a cycle unless the ac is running yeah the assumption here is that the ac runs at least some time okay so you're saying that you would turn off this active when the ac is off or on uh Honestly, I would actually bump it up to 3 kPa and just leave it on. Uh, okay. But I'm not sure exactly how much power it draws, so... Okay, I got it. I'm trying to get my configuration tablet here. Uh, purge file is currently drawing... Negative one power. I know that's not synchronizing right, so uh, there's still a game bug. All right, let me see. Purge valve is on at 100 watts. Okay. Yeah, it kind of needs to be on because it, I mean, when it's needed is when the system uh, out here gets stupidly cold for whatever reason. Right. Uh, that pump over there, though, that that can be off. Uh, yeah. Basically, you're just wasting power pushing liquid to gas unless the main pipe has a way to keep it as a gas. In this case, gotcha. So, like Caden was saying, that he runs some logic to turn stuff on and off based upon a, 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 a condition. Yeah. Yeah. And I get that. Um, uh, yeah, by the time you add the lot, the power cost of the logic and power the, low. uh, pipe analyzer, you're at the same power rating. <laughs> All right. So now the, the AC is kicked off. So we should see, oh, and now it's getting stupidly cold. And it, according to... I'll monitor the liquid side here. Okay. According to Caden, it says pollutants freeze at minus 100, and we're at minus 90 right now. What's your uh, pressure rating over there? Uh, 186 temperature is now it's getting warmer and now it's getting cold oh did the ac just trip on for a second i don't know I, I i've changed my point of view yep it's tripping on and on all right okay so it's gonna keep uh All right, we're at minus 96, 97. Okay, it just tripped on. Both pipe types allow some of the opposite state without being damaged. You can utilize that as well. All right, yeah, 97. basically you want to push, keep it within the limits of how much liquid will you allow in a gas pipe and how much gas will you allow in a liquid pipe. Oh, I got you, okay, all right. I think we're going to hit it here. It just, um, the sun's not out, so it should be getting cold in that room. Okay, now we got freezing temperature. It just kicked on. So the pollutant had a snowflake for a little bit there for about 99, uh, minus yeah. 99. All right, it's cold. Minus 100. And the AC just kicked on. So the saving grace here is the wall cooler was kicking on and off until it finally didn't have to kick on and it got too cold and burst. Yeah, that AC is keeping the, throwing out the heat, extra heat from the room into this pipe here, which just keeps things in check. All right. All 
Alright, it's closer to the cold temperature. And there's your snowflake again there. Yeah. So, hang on a sec. To actually test this out, if I turned off the logic for the wall cooler, that would that would give us a, a better test, right? Um, say that again. If you would, if you turned off the cooler Log completely. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. All right. All right. Oh. And we got a burst. All right. That didn't take long. And the pressure's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't quite work. Oh, we lost a radiator. Did it go flying or did we lose it? Uh, I think it's lost. Bummer. I'm fine. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Didn't realize you were that close to the uh, bursted pipe. Yeah. I'm guessing it's skipping the liquid and going to a freezing phase. Well, I was watching it until I went to turn off the... Um, I'm trying to see if we have any extra radiators over uh, here. I think that's correct, actually, because pollutants actually does that. There's a few gases in the world that will actually just do that. Like carbon dioxide is perfectly a perfectly good example. The odds of you finding like liquid CO2, it, it's pretty rare. Oh, I see. I see. I'm trying to find, uh, without making any, I guess we don't have any spare little radiators around. Here's a crazy idea. Why don't we oh. just switch that external pipe network to insulated pipes? Okay. I can do that. Wait, let's think that through for a second. Um, it off. needs to lose heat at some point. Because this is the heat dump from the AC unit. Yeah. Or we can go to my crazy idea and use a... Uh, pipe analyzer with some logic again consuming more power to draw on a pipe heater I mean it would be nice for a passive solution now we got to figure out this uh, this whole AC unit system So as long as it stays warm in there and the wall cooler stays on, we don't have a problem. It's the moment that it shuts off that this continues to cool the pipes, which is creating our problem. Yeah, exactly. What if we just strip down the number of radiators to just two instead of, or maybe even just one instead of four? So it doesn't get as cold as fast? Right. Okay. Um, nitrogen can get really cold without turning solid. Um, really? Yeah, nitrogen is a good example of something that can exist very easily uh, or within a pretty wide range right. uh, as a liquid. 
So the wall cooler just kicked off. So that's why things are getting cold. Pressure regulator set to 226 kilopascals. Oh. I mean, you can bump that up to 300. Okay. I'm adding more gas to the network. See, I'm, I'm just not really fluent in this whole water thing. Yeah, I'm not a hundred percent there myself, to be honest. Okay, we got good pressure. The temp is not unreasonable. Um, I think this might work. Well, the, the gas I added came from our waste farm, so it was about 30 degrees Celsius that I added. Gotcha. So it's not cooling as fast. Okay, all cooler just kicked on. Yeah, I think this, this might be the solution. All right, uh, without, okay. You can also keep the cooling part of the pipes empty unless you need to be cooled. Uh, I, I see what you're saying, okay, yeah. So I'm just, if I'm trying to maintain a certain temperature that's not far outside the bounds, why put radiators on the pipes is, is what I think you're saying, what you're alluding to, Electro. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still thinking old school to where you kept radiators on there and kept it cold so when it needed to cool, it would do a blast chill, basically. Part of me just wants to use a heat exchanger that's halfway stuck into that window there. Basically prevent the coolant from getting super cold. Right, 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 yeah. I just looked, I have uh, heaters on my coolant system as a fail safe. So you're doing a, a forceful uh, check. So you're checking using logic and forcing it. Um, we're, we're trying to, <laughs> we pulled all the radiators except for one off the pipes. Nitrate can get to minus 233 degrees, I think. So you're, if it gets to, to minus 99, it kicks on. I got you. So Electro, are you suggesting that we swap out pollutant for nitrogen for the cooling? I guess we could because we're using it as a coolant already in other parts of the base. Yeah. Maybe I can use propellant in my uh, jetpack. You know, there was a time when uh, I... <laughs> I had to use my CO2 tank because uh, I'm not suggesting anything because there are a bunch of solutions. Oh, I, I got you. I got you. Um, I the, gotta take care of some suit issues here. All right. I was out mining and I forgot to turn the beacon on. So I ran out of jetpack fuel. So I had to swap my two tanks. I was using my, uh, I was using my personal methane. Well, the, the bottom line here is that we're using, I think we're using more power than we're generating. Um, and our, our backup, we've changed one parameter. So the generator's on, because it got down to 25%. Okay. So now with that on, that causes another possibility that I put a band-aid solution in place. I gave our staging area more volume to hold, just as a precautionary.
Uh, I use water for all my coolant, uh, but it keeps it around 20 degrees Celsius, so just cool as a need. Wait, you can use any gas propellant? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, like I said, I went out doing some prospecting and I forgot to turn the beacon on, the, the manual beacon, just before they had the wireless battery. And usually you would use the other beacon, right? That's always on. And I forgot to turn it on and went out, filled up and I went, uh oh, no beacon. And I was, the, the thing was that even though you couldn't see things because of the, what do you call it? The field of view, the, the rendering range, for some reason at night, the lights would twinkle even outside of the range. So that would be hop up, look around, hop up, look around. And I went through all my jetpack fuel. Uh, would then the solution be to generate more power? Y yes. So, um, and that's what we're doing with the generator. What I ran into is that we were running the generator for a day and a half, which really isn't a problem except for two little issues. One is when they changed the volume pumps, the turbo pumps, we had to take it from two turbo pumps to six just to keep up with the pressure before we blow out a window or a wall. So we could run the generator constantly. We, we had the cooling and the, uh, the evacuation of gases just fine, but it would run for a day and a half. And when it ran that long, the amount of exhaust that it would put out, I think would uh, overstress our little staging area here. Uh, so now we changed the logic so that we, instead of going up to 95%, we only go up to 50%. And now that it only runs for a half a day versus a day and a half. Using fuel as a jet propulsion, jet propulsion and accidentally leaving your welder on is not oh no no i i uh i had it my first my first experience of pressurizing a room i used oxygen and then i went to do a weld and i had a flame chasing me all the way out of the base yeah yeah uh, yeah good times oh yeah You know, I don't mind it being hard. That's why I enjoy playing it. It's just when they make a change that's really beyond my, you know, let's say that for the most part, Ben has read all 24 chapters, all 24 volumes of the encyclopedia, and I've read 12. And you all have, are in the upper 20s. So that that's where I struggle is I, is I learned something. I said, okay, good. I know a couple ways of doing it a little differently just in case, but the whole, if all the gases acted the same, then I could, then I could probably flow, but now it's only certain gases. Pollutants do this, uh, the nitric oxide does this also, but, but this one doesn't do this because of that. So there's too many variables. I need one of these charts, you know? Exactly, yes, yes. The same thing happened with me with Kerbal. When I was first playing Kerbal on stream, I never understood Delta V until someone said, you know, and everyone would throw the wiki for the formula. I'm going, that's not helping. And then, you know, people would say it changes your inertia. I'm going, that's not helping. Um, but then when somebody says it's basically how much gas you have in the tank. And when they said that if this number is smaller than that number, you can't do that. I went, I get it. It's, it's how much gas is in the tank, even though that's so inaccurate. It, it I go, oh, I get it. Now I get it. All right, so um, the sun is out. All right. Encyclopedias. I know, I know. There's the Britannicas. <clears throat> Actually, when I growing up, we didn't have Britannicas. We had um, we had the kid version. Um, came from another Sears. Sears did their own line. My dad used to work for Sears. All right, so generators on. This is going to go until that gets up to 50%. So I'm going to sit here and babysit this. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. And why don't we why do we not want the generator to run? Well, it's not that it consumes too much fuel. Um it just it gives us too much exhaust. Yeah, I had a set growing up, but I don't think they were a thing anymore. No, they're not. They're not. I learned by doing. Well, if I can if I can get a tutorial. All right. Uh Ben that worked beautifully. Shut up. Shut off at 50%. Sweet. See, I'm I'm having a a dilemma. I'm trying to learn 3D fusion and every every example that I get uh something doesn't work right for me. So, I'm trying to create a um a vacuum hose adapter that goes from a two and a half to a 1.8. So uh, that's in, in, in inches. So I need to take my calipers and do it in millimeters since that seems to be the universal thing in 3D fusion. But it, I, I can't seem to, I can get my two circles, but I can't seem to extrude. I get an error in 3D fusion. So. I'm going to do a, a study group with uh, Alex when she gets back from Universal Studios and try to uh, try to see what I did wrong. All right, so with the sun going down, our top side batteries are they're okay, not the best. Would PLA hold up for that? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It uh, if uh, maybe if it was one mil thick, it wouldn't. But I'm making it like three or four mil thick. So, yeah, it's just for um, when I use the planer. Yeah. The thing is that. No, I, I don't want to have to. So if I have a DeWalt planer and it outputs a two, uh, it's two and a half, but it's really bigger on the outside, right? It's it's whatever it is. So then if I get a two and a half inch hose, it's a little bit bigger. I can clamp it down, but I need it to go to uh, my, my collection system, which I'm using a Cyclone, which I 3D printed, which is not two and a half. It's uh, it's it's like 1.8 inches. So I'll, sure, I could put that on there and then cramp it down, but I would rather have an adapter so I don't have to keep clamping so much. And then go from there. I think we're gonna use up all of our top side battery power. How did our basement charge to 50%? But it should go down to 25%. So I think this should should work. We just need to um, keep an eye on it. Yeah, hey, we have a total draw display now. Oh, yeah. All right. So. Okay. So the question is, if we have a total draw and our power generation is, let's figure out what the power generation is. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, 12, 15, 15 times four, right? One, two, three, four. So, what was that? Um, 60 solar panels. Did my math right? 15, that's 30 times two is 60. So yeah, that's about right. 60 solar panels that can maximally generate what 455 watts uh doesn't it reach 500 oh yeah i think well i think i don't think ours get that high but i think i think you're right so if we if we if we um play with the numbers a little bit and say we do 495 right if i get out the calculator here 
495 watts per times 60 is 29,700 watts. So what's that, 2.9 kilowatts? Sorry, you run up by me again. So if I do my calculator here, and it, I'll say that each panel gives us 495, and I times it by 60, I get 29,700 watts, which is what, 2.9 kilowatts or 2.8? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. All right. So we're generating from the solar panels 2.9 kilowatts. No, 29 kilowatts. 29 kilowatts, sorry. Yes. And we're using how much? So, 12. So we should have excess. Well, you got to keep in mind that the solar panels only do this during half the day. So if you divide that 29 kilowatts by two, right. that's actually 14. All right. So we're, okay, we're right under depending fund. Yeah. Interesting. All right, so hang on. Keep watching that for a sec. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something here. Okay. So. All right. So now what are we drawing? It went up a little bit to twelve point eight. So the filters don't draw as much power as they used to then, when they're filtering. It used to be a huge drain. Okay. Oh, something just peaked at 13.6 there. Um, well, I turned off the, so the filter is still running. I just turned off a digital valve. Yeah, so many displaced, they're all blinking away. <laughs> it's like filtration, filtration, cooling, and tooling is twitching. It's, I can't keep up, man. <laughs> <laughs> um... Too much information. <laughs> yeah, I think you nailed it. We're we're on the, we're not even using the trader right now. Okay. Uh, but anytime we do anything, you know, outside the ordinary, we're peaking power out. Power. Uh, yeah, we're drawing more power than we're bringing in. Okay. That's why the generator kicks in, which is fine. As long as we have fuel, we'll be good. Yeah, there's plenty of fuel down there. And it only running half a day doesn't stress out our exhaust here. Yeah, the drills are running, yep. Yeah. We have 19 megapascals uh, to be distributed. We have plenty of gas in the pipes. Yeah, according to this, the uh, mining area. I'm going to double check which one. That would be, yeah, mining area. doing 2000 you know the cooling solution <laughs> greenhouse excuse me bless you <laughs> thank you very much what'd you say the um, cooling solution you've got running over at greenhouse too it works flawlessly it does and uh, I've been curious as to why that hasn't uh, over cooled and burst a pipe. Well, it's because, well, one, there's always heat being generated in that room. That's true. Uh, the digital valves on and off constantly. 
Uh, the second is um, it's set to room pressure. So there's really not a lot of substance to even freeze in there. Not that it ever gets a chance to freeze. Why is this going so slow? Yeah, actually, I gotta take it back. That temperature, oh, it fluctuates a lot. Well, it should be based upon temperature on the logic. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's working fine. What I'm saying is that on the cold side here, uh, or, you know, on the radiator, radiator side on the outside here. Yeah. On the uh, vacuum it goes side? Down to, it goes down to negative 84 Celsius, 85, 86. But it's such a low quantity of gas that, you know, it shoots right back up to one Celsius as soon as that uh, digital valve turns on. Oh, okay. The pressure never goes above 100. That is a marvel of technology. I still want to try the heat exchanger thing, but then I remembered that we have to keep uh, an active flow on both sides for it to work, so. <laughs> well, I'm sure I there's mean... a better cooling solution. I just don't know what it is yet. The, um, yeah, because it stays until the logic breaks, uh, it stays a nice comfortable 30 degrees Celsius in here. But we have a little bit of nitrogen in here. Do me a favor, turn that filter on. Okay, it's on. All right. So that should draw the nitrogen out. It should. We have 0 0.02 moles. Well, that might take a while. It's probably my fault. I think I was jetpacking around in here trying to do something uh, with the RVs. I'm not a fan of a pure oxygen atmosphere anyways. Well, there's 4% CO2, 90... Oh, I'm sorry. 95.9%, we'll say 96% O2, and then 4% CO2. Yeah. And I maintain that with uh, old school logic over here, where we, I look for a ratio, and if it goes below, we turn on a volume pump. Oh, yours is like the true atmosphere, yeah. let that run. Less flammable that way, but you know, details. <laughs> All right, so. I know they said they changed something, but why did this? I can turn off this filter here. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, you want me to leave it running for a while? Or... It doesn't matter. I use 100% yeah. CO2 in a greenhouse. So they, they did talk about changing uh, how airlocks work. I don't remember this. This is going really slow. Now, I know I'm not doing a true airlock. I'm just sending oh, it to the I pipe. made a small change to it. I put a passive oh, vent on okay, that's the inside. Why. Okay, that's why. So we're actually pushing the stuff back and forth. I got you. All right. And, uh, yeah, because it kept getting stuck when I was entering it. So the room is at 100 kilopascals. That's okay. Let's bump up the pressure to 101. Oh yeah, I've done that before. You have to based upon um, the volume of the frame and not the pressure. I learned that the old school way. Well, 
I learned it because I was trying to do 100 kilopascals, but when you look at the cheat sheet, um, the frame actually is based upon volume and not pressure. And I'm going, what? That doesn't make any sense. Oops. So when you look at this and you go to atmospherics, yeah. And you look at the somewhere, a grid vol volume is 8,000 liters. So so we were, we were putting usually a tank underground that would do it so it'd be faster. All right, I'm going to be right back, guys.
All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. I didn't launch the game or anything like that. I do apologize. Um, <laughs> the um, the appliances that we've had for, I don't know, five months, six months here, um, they're all LG. And if you leave the door open, it chimes. If the washing machine is done, it chimes, so on and so on. Well, there was a new chime going on. I was trying to figure out what it was. Alex Jr.'s iPad battery was dying, so... I heard this ding, 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 ding. I'm going, it's not the fridge. I didn't leave it open. I've been here too long. So I was trying to figure out what it was. Figured it out. All right. Um, all right, let's go over and see if I've burst a pipe because I think it's one of those um, situational things we have that if the room condition ever changed, I, I don't think this would work. All right, All right so, um, So we're, we're basically using as much power as we generate and store. And then, um, so what would happen if we added more storage topside? Because I think we have two batteries in the locker. I thought I saw, um, Yeah. Well, let's see here. I don't think that's going to cause a problem. Um, well. Uh, if I add a frame to add that. Um, I'd have to move that, which means I'd have to move all that. Or I could get creative and just put it on a shelf, an invisible shelf. Unless it'll lock in by itself. Let's see here. Oh, it might. I guess Ben went AFK. Ben, did you go AFK? Electronic parts. Oh, okay. Oh, I know where I got some. I'm enjoying starting a whole new colony where there are separate spread out buildings for stuff, including some cosmetic ones. Well, um, as soon as we put a nail in all these possible problems, we are going to start on site B. And I think the first thing we're going to do is a pressurized room. And uh, again, try to try like you do, trying to do things 
that that are aesthetically better looking than just squares and i've never really used cladding or the other sorts of what am i going oh over here so this will be fun uh, i need a screwdriver Now, the one thing I know uh, Ben and I had uh, a moon base before where we had corridors connected to all the different, like, we had the greenhouse, we had the, the filtration, we had the um, um, our, our habitation area. And the problem we ran into was because all of the corridors were used glass windows, each time the sun came out, our air conditioning couldn't keep up. All right. Oh, yeah, that's right. So all I would have to do is replicate. So I need heavy cable. Uh, okay, hang on. Drop this for a sec. That section of this real quick go back okay Gotcha. So if I turn that on, okay. Then what I need to do is drop that again. green wire because that'll cause data error so i will do um never know then if you looks for like evidence that I have any green wires I don't So I'm kind of curious what our maximum wattage from our solar panels are. That was weird. There we go. Why do they keep fluctuating? 
I don't see any sun. There it is. All right, Alex and Alex Jr. are on their way from Universal back home. Be home around five or six. Let's see here. About quarter after six, it looks like. All right. So it looks like we get about 499 watts. So not quite 500, so it's pretty good. There's likely IC code that will display the info through the console max wattage solar panel. I, without a doubt, there probably is. Oh, all right, so that's done. Um, all right, let's do this. Uh. Um, I'm at, he, he, I uh, was working on our display there and, um, I am going to actually cause some more power drain here, but I'm going to wait until he gets back. So the, the problems that we have, we know we're using about the same amount of power that we generate through solar. That's why we have a generator in the basement. Sounds really weird. Could Ben also display the current power generation? Uh, oh, probably, yeah. So we have a big fluctuation. I think this is, oh, is the generator on? Why, why are the filters on? Interesting. Um, Did I turn that on accidentally and not turn it off? It's a state zero. Okay, I left that on accidentally. Okay. All right, that takes care of that. So the biggest draw is um, 13, which is right here. All right. So that's the um, all the volume, all the volume pumps and whatnot down here, uh, which is circulating all of our gases to make sure it gets cooled or warmed faster. Uh, so 200 watts consistent in terms of math. Right. So if you split split the night versus day, yes, I think is what you're gearing at there. So the greenhouses hardly draw any power. So does the tool. The arc furnaces are about to go up, I think. Filter low. What? And I'm back. Yay. So uh, Chad was wondering if you could uh, not only display the total draw, but our total power generation also. Well, of course I can. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's going to take a bit more work, though. Hey, why don't you, instead of trying to draw a wire all the way there, you want to test the wireless stuff and see if that works? Uh, I can 
use the existing wiring. The problem is I have to isolate um, oh. the power generation from the power transfer. Oh, oh, I got you. I got you. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to build a large transformer to isolate that. Because it's, you said 29 kilowatts? Yeah. Yeah, that's a big transformer. Okay. All right, big transformer coming up. Yay! Right, because you're, you can't just simply draw the data. At... Well, why can you pull the, uh, from your green wire where you're doing all your data, can't you just pull the information, the data from the data side? Oh, maybe like a battery off of the solar panels? Yeah. Uh, but then I have to multiply it by the number of panels, so it's... Mm, it's messy. Ben says messy, so that means no. Because then don't forget, um, he, he would have to... A, yeah, can I do a batch read of the solar panels to where it's going to show me a sum? Well, um, why don't you do it over here and see if it works, and if it does, then yes. Let's find out. Because I thought that you were doing calculations off the large batteries, but you don't want to pull the battery information. I don't have anything so showing solar. Well, uh, oh no, right here. I right, so the cable liner says 29.7 kilowatts. Hey, that's what we said in math. I know how to do math. So, all the data lines come in right over here. So you can just put some stuff right here. Yeah, or, so I think this cable analyzer here might do it. That's the output? Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at there. No, that's the problem. I labeled it, <laughs> that's a good reminder apparently. It's labeled as cable analyzer solar panels plus transfer. Oh. So that one should read the same as this one then. No, 27. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 29.6. Yeah, it's on the same circuit. Okay, all right, that's um, what I thought, yeah. So I gotta chop this up here and put a big transformer. Okay. So I am going to smelt some ore. And these are hooked up to which transformer? This medium one over here? No. no, no they're hooked up to... Yeah. Ore processing arc.
All right, let's see what happens here. So the arc furnace uh, power draw is dependent upon what it's smelting. Um, gold is the highest next in silver. Yeah, so okay, so ore processing really doesn't go that high. Because we only got four arc furnaces over there. Okay. I know because it's it's softer right yeah i i didn't get that i thought because it's softer metal it's either easier to smelt what are the main areas that they've uh revamped lately so they did the um the water and uh, gas. They did something about the atmospherics, which I haven't noticed. Maybe they were just trying to explain. Um, so what did they work on after or before? What was their big release? I'm trying to see a pattern here. <clears throat> I can. Is that what the Pedia says or is that? So they did change it? Oh, the wiki. All right. So, um, oops, hang on. Oh, you mean in real life? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. So, uh, okay. So according to the people that have collected data. Well, that's going to be under electrical. Uh, somewhere. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So, so gold is 2000. Oh, biomass is 3,500. All right. Yeah. So nickel, silver, lead. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand the discrepancy. Um, so they did powered vent update, vents, heat exchangers, and new suits. That was July 31st, July 20th. They did the phase change. I'm trying to see their history of changes. Um, character movement and spray gun project clinic the update is a culmination all right so that was just a bunch of bug fixes and then back in april they did the ic circuitry trading update farming update so I'm, I'm trying to see if there's a pattern to their updates here so they added the deep miner of september of last year so it's one year old and i'm just now starting to use it um so a year ago they updated the thermodynamics
Alright, so let's... I haven't looked at the Discord. I wonder what's in beta. Alright, cool. And I was going to hop over to their Discord and see if uh, I can find that. There it is. So on the beta, let's see here. Dramatic impact on worlds far from the sun, such as Mimas and Europa for the usage of solar panels. Additionally, as orbits are not circular during the local year, you will have varying solar radiance values. So I'm gonna work on panels. So they fixed the rockets in space, do not interact with the planet's atmosphere. Their atmosphere is now vacuum. Uh, added missing umbilical names. Okay, that's good. So hopefully rockets will work when they push us out. Improve the rocket park functionality. So it looks like they're working on the rocket and some solar differential stuff for planets that are very far from the sun. They added an automated landing control loop. All right, so it looks like rocket might be working soon. All right, so. Hey, is the sun coming up anytime soon, or...? Uh, hang on. Are you out of power? No, we've got a good example here of the generator maintaining uh, operation of the base here. Well, let's see here. Um, pretty soon. Now, I don't know if you noticed it, but I added one more big battery to the top side. So we had more yeah, yeah, I saw it. Okay. Yeah, the generator is running down here. Okay. Um, so what it's doing is it's generating. Uh, eleven point five kilowatts for a draw of sixteen point five. <laughs> okay. So it's short five kilowatts. Yeah, I can see the transfer popping on up here. Yeah, it's kind of like on and off 50% of the time. So yeah, I'd say it's keeping up okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, the panels are ready to receive solar. Hey, we go heavy duty transfer. Uh, finding ways to prevent logic chips and pumps from eating all your power has always been a staple in this game. That is very true, yes, because when you need pumps to move, 
to move stuff, right? They draw power and logic to make stuff do things automatically, yes. I think eventually what we'll probably have to do, if, if we really get into a serious power crunch, I think on site B, we're gonna start maybe trying to do things on and so we have less chips, like more IC and less of, because that, that's gonna be a huge learning curve for me because I can do this okay, barely. I can't do IC. All right, sun's out. Yeah, it's not transferring power anymore. And we're pulling in 29.5. So we're not quite getting... No, generator is still running here because the state of charge is uh, 38%. All right, so it's got to run up to 50. All right. So while that's on, that means we have some exhaust coming from tops or from bottom side to top side. And that's always made me nervous. But what I did is I did something that you didn't want. You didn't want to add more infrastructure. I just put a big tank up here. Not a big tank. I but... noticed. I almost ran into it. <laughs> yeah. All right. That gives us a, a lot better buffer when that generator runs. Yeah, that's fine. Generator is still running, though. To thirty nine percent. Well, the the pipes can hold up to what they say. It's Thirty. Yeah, it's a poop tank. You're exactly right. <laughs> um, that's our septic tank, but it's above ground. Um, pipes. What they used to be able to hold sixty megapascals. Did they reduce yeah. that or something? Um, they reduced the volume. Oh, okay. I don't think they actually reduced the uh, maximum pressure. Well, I, I tell you what, what we what we're having a problem recovering from is between the cycles of the generator. Um, that top side battery just passed the uh, charge here. Top side is at forty one. Oh, okay. Basement is at forty. So the generator I mean, is still running. Okay. The um the heat of the gas, so like uh, CO2 is 79 degrees Celsius, 95 on pollutant. So, I mean, they, I know they can go much higher than that. Now I can see the big transformer is flicking on and off up here. Should it be doing that? Yep. Okay. Um, wait, what? <laughs> the big transformer power switch is sending me Morse code. Tell Ben I on a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the power switch is turning on and off. It's not flick, it's not switching, but the power light for the switch is going on and off. Yeah, because it only goes on when there's power. Oh, I thought they would flip. These usually, the rocker switches usually flip. I wonder if that animation just broke. I hope so. Yeah. I found the easiest way to keep heat exchange running without burning power is to keep each gas at its mid-most temperature so you can transition it back and forth between gas and liquid easily. But don't all the gases have different midpoints? Yeah, they all do. How do you do that? Well, if you know the conditions, um, like the pressure and the temperature at which each gas is liquefied, then you can 
balance your gas tank versus your liquid tank of that particular substance. Okay. Um, all right, all right. So they're using some logic with some heaters or radiators to maintain those levels. And once you get well, there... Probably just the, uh, probably just a purge valve, really. Oh. Uh -huh. I keep forgetting about this. Well, good news. Uh, solar panels are generating 29.9 kilowatts. Wow, that's, a, that's right where it should be then, yes. This right, we're actually transferring power downstairs. Uh, but we're getting ready to, I don't want to say we're about to lose the sun, but it's past the noon point. Yeah, we're transferring power below here, okay. um, which means that the state of charge of the batteries below here is going to hit 50 quicker than just with the generator running by itself. Right now, the batteries in the basement here or the underground are at 48%. They're about to hit 50, then the generator will shut off. Okay. Ta-da. Right. This is uh, a lot more manageable. That was a good. So solar is providing yeah, about 12 kilowatts sustained. So you can compare that to how much is sustained. Wow. We're using 34. Oh, okay. So something dropped off. Because it was up to 30. No, it's up. It's what the heck is peaking here? Our total draw is, was at 33, there it is. I don't see. Uh, or processing and filtration are flickering. Yeah, but why would that increase by 10? Drop down and then go back up. Yeah, there's a GH1B has a one kilowatt load that's turning on and off. Is that the... It can't be the wall cooler. Uh, could be. Oh, it yeah, is. Actually, that would be. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Wow. That's quite the power hog. That's because the sun came out, so I got warm in there. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, ore processing is going between different mineral uh, stuff to uh, smelt. So they're currently smelting. So if we turn everything on, we cannot sustain, but it looks like we cycle <laughs> inadvertently to where we can maintain. And when we overuse, the generator is doing exactly what it should do. Yep. All right. So I guess what we can do is, um... oh, did you get your, your bat, your wire over here for that? It did. No. There's a wire going to... Oh, no, there's not. Sorry. Um, 
I have to add whatever the gas generator is doing. Um, but I've got a reading on the other two, so... Huh. What? Oh, oh, I see. You want to take the solar and the generator gener for total generation. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah, unless you want it separate. Nah. I mean, what whatever's easier. Because if we showed solar separate, we'd know what our generation is. But then, of course, if if we have a... Oh, we can split it. That would be yeah. easier. Okay. We'll have to do that next Sunday, though. Uh, yeah, we're out of time. Yep. Yeah. Well, that was a learning experience, okay? I, I don't completely grasp what's going on. I, I mean, I, I get it, but if I had a situation that was even similar, I'd probably be futzing around with different things trying to figure out what's going on. I get, I get it that when something gets cold, you want to um, take the condensation from the cold and evaporate it so it goes back into a gas. I get that. I get that. I'm going to forget that by next Sunday. It's all right. I'll be there to remind you. <laughs> Looks like it's very warm. The arc furnace is on. Ben. All right, guys. Next Sunday, we'll do some more stationers. I'll be back with some Starfield tomorrow. So I appreciate you guys hanging out. Appreciate all the good input. Let's roll some credits here real quick. Edit music. Edit music. Uh, Evil Six Slayer, thanks for the follow. Uh, ben, thanks for the gifted sub to Evil. Appreciate it. And Cade, thank you for the resub. Thank you, Evil. Appreciate it. Cade, we'll see you later. Ben? I'll see you in a week.